Hi, this is Tim. Today we're going to continue working through our conveyor trainer exercises. In our last video, we made it where the parts sorted based off of whether they were the shiny part or the black part. And let's just, let's just go ahead and go through this as we hit the start button. We can pull all of our parts out and we can just start dropping them. And so they sort out great. But if there are no parts available, it just keeps on running. So in this video, we're going to make it turn off if it hasn't seen a part in a certain amount of time. Please take a moment to like this video and subscribe to our channel. We put out at least one automation video a week. And any questions that come up, feel free to put them in the comments. Your question this week could easily be next week's automation topic. Also, I'd like to thank Industrial Concepts for working with us on this project. So in this video, you're going to see Industrial Concepts conveyor trainer, and we're going to be using our Compact Logics trainer. We already have videos on how we've wired them together and the steps we've gone through to get our program where it is at now. So look down in the description for it. So what we're going to do in this one is we have this part present sensor here that we haven't even talked about yet, but we have a sensor that will see if there is a part dropped right here and it points this direction and we're going to say that if it hasn't seen a part let's and i'm just going to arbitrarily throw a number let's just throw 15 seconds at it if it hasn't seen a part in 15 seconds we want to stop our conveyor so if we go up to our conveyor rung which is rung zero right now the green button will start our conveyor Got to wait on the world's quietest compressor. I don't know if I've mentioned this yet in this series, but um, yeah, if you need a quiet compressor for an office environment, this is what you need. I mean, it's just, there it goes, hissed off. It, it, it's sitting right underneath me. But all right, so the green button right here is going to start our conveyor, and then it's going to stay sealed in until we hit the red button. So just like earlier, you remember we added that second condition to our black pusher. In fact, it's still in there. So right now, if we go down to rung two, either the black pusher extended switch, or if we've been trying to extend for two seconds, we'll shut off our black pusher. We're going to make two conditions for this one. So what we're going to do is we're going to add another rung to this. And then we are going to look for an examine off. And the examine off is going to start a timer. So we'll go to our timer tab, we'll look for a TON, and let's call this timer no part present. And we'll create that one, and it will be a type of timer. And oh, I forgot to put an address here, but yeah, that would be important. Is in this case, we're going to look at local colon one colon i dot data dot zero. And that's our conveyor part present. And I said I wanted 15 seconds. So that would be 15,000 milliseconds. And then let's go up to rung zero. Oops. And actually, I didn't notice that. I drug this down on below rung one. I meant to drag it, drag it above, but here's an opportunity to learn something. If you need to move a rung, you can just simply drag it to the next green mark. And there we go. All right, so when this timer is done, we want to stop our conveyor. So all we're going to do is go up here and go to our favorites tab, and we're going to go for an examine if all. And we're going to look for no part present dot dn. So what that means is as long as that timer has not timed out, or mainly we have not been 15 seconds without seeing a part, we're going to run our conveyor. So let's go ahead and put these two rungs into our PLC. And let's hit our start button. We don't even worry about putting parts in it yet. Let's just hit their start button. And you'll notice it's not going to do anything. And that's because that timer is timed out. So now, let's drop a part into it. Now, some of y'all were like, oh, it should start up. Well, no, we haven't put anything into it to do that yet. But now, if we hit our start button, oops, so 
I don't know where I did this at, guys, but if you followed my video exactly, it didn't work. And if I look at rung one, uh, I ended up with a preset of zero. So I don't know where I went wrong there, but we need to change our no part present preset to 15,000 because I, I did something wrong. I don't know what I did. I'll have to check the video or somebody will be sure to tell me in the comments, I'm sure. So now, again, if we hit the button, nothing's going to happen because we've timed out our timer. But now we drop a part into it. We hit the start button. That part works. And now if we wait 15 seconds, I don't know why I didn't make this five seconds because this is an awful long time to sit here and talk and wait. as it turns off. So next, how long should this be for? Because obviously the black pusher is the furthest. So now let's drop a part in there for the black pusher. Let's hit the start button and let's watch our time here and see when it's done. Okay, and realistically it's done around three point something seconds. We don't need to be going for 15 seconds. So let's change our preset on our no part present to 5,000 for five seconds. And let's put a part in it again. We hit the start button. Of course, I should have put a black part in, that way you would have seen that we were close to the edge. But all right, now let's put a black part in with the start button. Okay, and that, that works pretty good. So a couple things we've done is one, yeah, we've saved some electricity, but also we've saved bearing wear. We've sell, saved belt wear. We've saved guide wear. We're saving a lot of money by turning this conveyor off when it's not needed. Now, a lot of you were probably thinking, well, when we drop the part, shouldn't it start? Maybe it should, maybe it shouldn't. And there's where it's gonna be dependent on your application, but yeah. We probably want to do that. But usually at this point, we wouldn't have a start stop. You'll have a start stop and maybe there's some external stop methods. But usually if it has a way to automatically start, there won't also be a start button there. But what you will see is a handoff auto control. And switch three, we have configured so that left is input 10 and right is input 11. So input 10 in that case would be hand. Input 11, would be auto. So we're going to do a couple things here. Is first, we are going to switch this from a start stop control to a handoff auto control. And let's hit that step first. So what we're going to do is we're going to edit rung zero, which has that conveyor motor in it. And we're only going to keep this part not present done for now. So what we're going to do then is we are going to, let's just start off fresh. Let's, let's delete everything but it out. And let's start by adding a branch. And then drag the part present into the lower part of the branch. And so now in the top part of my branch, I'm going to put local colon one colon I dot data dot 10. So that right now is labeled as switch three to the left. Let's relabel it to switch three in hand. And now let's add another examine on to the lower branch. And this is going to be local colon one colon I dot data dot 11. And right now this one's labeled switch three to the right. Well, let's make that one switch three in auto. We could also make this conveyor in auto, but it's labeled up there switch three. So we'll leave it just like that. Okay, let's go ahead and put this program in and see what it does. Switch three is in the middle position and nothing's happening. So now let's switch switch three to the left position. And our conveyor is going to come on and it is in hand. Now we switch it to the middle position and it immediately goes off. Now let's switch it to the right position. Now it doesn't actually come on because right now our part present timer 
is done. We can see that right here. And now let's drop a part onto our conveyor. And immediately our conveyor starts back up, part gets ejected, and when we're done the conveyor turns off. So there's how to make an automatic control to start and stop your conveyor, and also how to add a handoff auto switch. Now somebody in the comments will probably put that handoff auto switches should be hardwired and not go through the PLC, and honestly that's a discussion I don't want to get into in this video because there are times that I would absolutely agree handoff auto should be hardwired, that way if your PLC is bad you can switch over there to hand. However, with so many controls now where systems are so integrated and you know you don't just have a standalone conveyor that you may need to walk up and just do that you're seeing more and more that a lot of them are or just on an hmi so it, it just depends on your situation there so i hope this video has been helpful i think we can get a few more videos out of this we can talk about counting because every time it shoots a part off we have a good part so we can count shiny good parts black good parts and who knows what else may come up till next time Hi, this is Tim. And this is Amber of TW Controls. We run the automation store. Hey, thanks for finding our channel. Here's a playlist with some similar videos. And YouTube thinks you'll like this video. Please like our video and subscribe to our channel. And if our videos have helped you make some money and you're not using our products, please consider supporting us on Patreon. Till next time. See ya.